Good morning. Today I want to tell you all about the impossible route, how it started, a little behind the scenes, how I felt that I couldn't show in the videos. Why? Because I heard from Jeremiah we are going to Yellowstone in January to ride fat bikes. So I think it's fitting that we're up here in the snow. I hate snow. I hate it so very much. I hate being cold. And in a month's time, I'm be freezing. Funny little side story is my wife's uh, sweet tooth is out of control. And last night we're walking around and she saw this jar of taffy. And instead of her going and just getting them like an adult, she like nudges me and she's like, what's, um, what's that over there? What's that sign say? Like knowing that I am just gonna be like, well, what is over there? What is the sign say? And then, like I go over there and I'm like, it says unlimited taffy. Wow, you like taffy. And then I get it. So then she like uses me as an excuse to like investigate. And then she got so much. I got so so much Daffy. Just to follow up, yesterday, I last night, I posted on Strava uh, the link to ridebikes.com. That was the first time I announced that site. I was thinking three orders, tw 29 orders. All right, so we have Bridget, we have Victor, we have Cole, Brett, Scott, Garrett, Overall, Overall? Orville. Orville. Nathaniel, Brittany, Danny, Greg, David, Humberto, Rex, Adam, Amy, Andrew, or Drew as we know him. Ryan, James, Benjamin, Ezekiel, Patrick, Sebastian, Chad, Deshaun, uh, Douglas, and Amanda. Amanda's my mom. Thank you, mom. So while she's getting all the orders set up, I wanna talk about the Impossible Route, where it started from, the concept, because to me, the Impossible Route is one of my greatest accomplishments in my life, and I can't imagine I'll be able to top that, even if it just stopped right now. You might already be familiar with the story, but in 2020, Jeremiah Bishop had hit me up after I had met him at a gravel race, didn't know who he was, he loaned me a bike. So I go over and I'm talking to Jeremiah Bishop, I believe is his name. And I was like, dude, I'm in a pickle. So then I connect with Jeremiah, I went to his Fondo, me and him kind of hit it off a little bit. Oh man. Nice. Yeah, they got everything. So he hit me up to do a film about him doing the Strava's hardest segment. So originally, look, I was not in any physical form to undertake some crazy impossible route, but Jeremiah wanted me to come out. And I was like, well, dude, I'm not going all the way to Hawaii without doing something cool, I'm gonna ride two. Two weeks before we got there, they changed everything and they were like, hey, there's this new route, no one's ever done it before. We kinda coined it the impossible route. And look, I didn't wanna look like a squid at all. We touch our toes in the water, it's like this very ceremonious thing, and I get three pedal strokes in and I, I can't unclip and I tip over. <laughs> Good. Like my that. one, my one. So I didn't want to look like an idiot, instantly look like an idiot. Me and Jeremiah don't really have like a super crazy relationship at this moment. So for the rest of the ride, I was really kind of tripping out. Like, dude, did I get way in over my head? Yes is the answer. I was way in over my head. I kind of put that side, that piece of you where you're like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I shouldn't be here. And I just put that aside and I said, I'll worry about that later. But right now, it's beautiful, it's amazing. Oh my goodness. It's just a hill. Yeah. Fast forward to I have done all of the hard stuff. All I gotta do is the final ascent up to the observatory, and I am done. And I laid on the ground and I had this moment of complete and utter ego death. And this sounds super hippie, but it's so weird that there is, who is this other thing inside of me talking? You know what I mean? Like when you're like, oh, I gotta wake up early. Then what is the other person going, nah, dude, just sleep in. And then you're fighting with yourself. Team up, right? <laughs> you don't get on the same page. Like if we both wanted to get to the top of the climb, then everything's good. But why is there a part, where, why is there a persona hidden deep down that's just like negative Nelly. I think back now on that moment as a moment 
where if I had laid on the ground, if I had stayed on the ground, and I had not gotten back up, my life would be completely different at the moment. Which is wild that in, in certain moments, you don't know when a key pivotal moment in your life really is. And it's very easy for me at that moment to say, you know what, I, I did a good try and we'll high five and we'll get them next time. But no, I pushed through and that was the start of me expanding who I am as a human, upgrading the code, Tyler 2.0. Sebastian, we got you dialed, dude. Uh, an extra small green and a medium coral, which I'm a little worried that you didn't put the right size in. But that's what the order says. It says extra small, so I'm putting an extra small in here. I hope that's correct. Threw some stickers in there for you too. Sebastian, appreciate you, bud. And so then in the edit, not only did I have a chance to sort of like find myself as an athlete, but then I found myself as a filmmaker. So when everything was said and done, I had this crazy feeling of, of accomplishment that I've never had before. A feeling of like, I just did something, I'm the second person to have ever done something, but I felt so vindicated and justified and like, it was such a good feeling, I couldn't wait to do another one. Patrick, thank you Patrick, what did you get? The ride repeat gold, fitness level hibernation. The long way home. I was gonna ride from Mexico all the way up like through Death Valley, up over the Sierras, down into Yosemite and back home. Now this was a one-off project. I did this video pitch. I sent it to number one and two at Canyon. The video pitch was two minutes long. In two minutes and 10 seconds, I got a call from Canyon saying, we're in, but we want four of these. Where is the gold? This is yellow, that's not gold, right? There's the neon yellow, which is right here, but then where's the gold? Four is way too much. Like, these are called impossible routes for a reason. They're very difficult. And this one that I just pitched you is so very hard. It's seven days. But I did, I said yes. And then immediately I'm like, well, how do I make this happen? Because I don't know what I'm doing at all. I pitched it, we got the budget, I need help. So that's when I hit up Jeremiah and I was like, hey man, we got ourselves a four episode series. And uh, I, I need your help on the logistics, the route, how is this actually gonna happen? Also, I am not good enough to do this all by myself and so what happens when I completely fail? We need someone to look like a hero. That came in Jeremiah. So we head out to Death Valley. This one, we're gonna do it stage race style. We're gonna try to match the California backcountry discovery route as closely as we can. There's gonna be a little bit of leeway in it, you know? People ask me, what's the hardest impossible route you've done? Every one of them is the hardest I've ever done for a different reason. No one ever gave me an out. No one ever allowed me to quit. He is looking really rough. We've gone only two days. And, and that was such a valuable lesson that I learned on myself of like, if you put yourself in a situation where you can't quit, you just, if there isn't an option, what your body can do is insane. Day two is really where I thought something changed, like my genetics changed. I had so much external stress on me that it forced me just into such a place of growth and it was so uncomfortable. But by the time day seven rolled in and we were rolling in and I was riding stronger than ever and I was the happiest I've ever been in my life, that feeling I'm addicted to it now. I got a little bit of that taste in Hawaii of doing something like, whoa, this is like objectively crazy. Then Death Valley doing a motorcycle course on bicycles, okay, and finishing strong. So then my feeling was amazing. And then, spoiler alert, broke my leg. Yeah! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and I anticipate, just like any broken bone, rib, anything non-surgical, it takes about three or four weeks for callus to start to form and for that motion at that fracture site to, to decrease and you're going to start feeling better. I would push it like probably six to eight. Ryan from Texas. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you. We're going to get you a uh, berry shirt youth and the coral shirt. Now, look, we're going to have way more designs coming in here shortly. Uh, this was our summer collection that we had hoped to have up for summer, and it didn't work out, and that's all good. So we will have way more. But this youth shirt is... Mm. Look at that youth shirt. That is sick, dude. After breaking my leg, was I at an all-time low? Was I so depressed? Was I just like, I hate everything? Yes is the answer, yes. And that is another time in which I could have just said, you know what, this isn't for me. Um, I've done some really cool things. I did Hawaii, I did, I did Death Valley. Time to hang it up. But again, a lot of times when bad things happen in life, you can reframe that into something really great. And I took an opportunity where I could not move, okay? The wife, she's home for 13 days with the kids, waiting for me to get home. I come home, and instead of helping, I say, you gotta wipe my ass for 46 weeks. So I physically expanded myself. I got a sports psychologist, mentally expanded myself, and then creatively expanded myself with the video. We got it done. You should watch it. It's good. On to the next one. Ryan, thank you so much, man. So I think I had 12 weeks to do the next impossible route from the time I broke my leg. That was scary. Plus we brought on another rider, Travis. That dynamic ended up really helping me out because he had uh, a big knee issue. He was, he was struggling pretty hard the whole time. And so like that focus sort of went on him. And so then Jeremiah wasn't pushing me very hard. It was sort of like there was, I wasn't the weak link is what I'm trying to say. That is a lot. Why do we have so many of this style? Now, Montana, I was completely burnt out. I didn't want to ride. I didn't want to sit. I didn't want to lay down. I hated everything. I was a ghost, but I had to get it done. I couldn't just complain and not do it. And like, it showed me that even at my lowest of lows, I have the ability to push through. Uh, I wish that I had had a better experience during it, but it taught me how to push through when everything is as bad as it could get. Montana's done. And now we have a fourth one to do and it's pretty late in the year. I would say that to me, Colorado is the hardest one I've done because you can't use your mental strength. You can't just will yourself to do it. You can't just keep pedaling and having a good time. Like when you can't negotiate with elevation, it's just so difficult. So there's no negotiating with elevation elevation don't care i really feel like i have a strong mindset but I, it it is literally useless in this moment and now that one was the only edit that i have not done myself uh and i was trying to expand the the business impossible route having it be not such a bottleneck on me that if i'm the only one that touches the edits you know that's hard to keep putting out content in a, in a streamed time we had some guys bradley ethan I mean, they crushed it. I was so happy with the edit they did, but we could barely pay them. I mean, we paid them probably 10% of what they were worth just because we didn't have the budget. So then that was season one. And now we pitched for season two. So we had Texas, France, Washington, and a snow one. France, we just uploaded that one. Probably the best film I've ever done. I was at peak happiness. And yesterday's video kind of explains why, because I thought I was gonna be a millionaire when I got home. And now Jeremiah says, we have to go in January to go do the fourth one because we couldn't do it this January because we didn't have bikes. So it's a fat bike episode through Yellowstone National Park in the snow. Hey, hey baby girl. Whoa. <laughs> um, you look like a little hippie girl. <laughs> <laughs> So in the last 24 hours, how many total orders have we gotten? Just off that Strava post. Um, we got a bunch yesterday and then today I think we got 28. 28. 
Is it dumb how much I love this Zwift setup? I've had a lot of setups in my day and there's just something about this one that gives me the feels. This year's Train Like a Pro, um, I'm not training like a pro at all. I mean, I'm very busy and I'm doing a lot of other things and I think I'm crushing in life. Um, but I have, I mean, I'm slacking. I want a business that goes beyond. And the impossible route is definitely something that can. Mine and Jeremiah's story so many times. And so then that leads me into the next thing I want to talk about is bringing on other people, other riders, other guests. Because Canyon is the title sponsor, they have to be riding in Canyon. Now that might not sound like a big deal, but that now makes three selectors. Can you do an impossible route? Can you ride a Canyon? And are you available? And so then that leads to literally two people uh, for the year. It's like, okay, we have an option of two people because how, what is the sustainability of it? Like what's the future of the impossible ride if we just keep doing the same thing? At a certain point, it's just gonna be boring. To be like, okay, bro, you're suffering in a cool place, next. And as I see myself getting older, what am I gonna do when I'm 50? Well. I don't know yet. And that actually scares the shit out of me, dude. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but we're going to keep plugging away. Me and my wife are going to work on this business, ride bikes. I'm going to work on myself as an athlete. Me and Jeremiah are going to work on the impossible route. Hopefully, in a couple years, we can sell that business. Life's a little hectic at the moment, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, I have got to ride. When you actually decide to do something, it's already done. Future you has done it. The problem that people have, me included, is when something becomes so very difficult that you fail, it's because you never decided you would do it in the first place. You were gonna try, you were gonna see how it goes, you were gonna just give it a whirl. As soon as you say, I'm doing it, and that's that, and you draw the line in the sand, boom. It's done. You just have to go through that experience. And all the pain and the anguish and the hurt and the suffering, that's just a part of the story. And so you don't use that as an excuse to quit. Oh, I'm hurting, my legs hurt, it's midnight. I can't, I uh, mm, uh. That's just part of the story on how you succeeded. Instead of I can't because I did it despite. Once you flip that switch, it's done. Coast into the finish line and have the experience. Well, about as late as we could possibly get. I mean, like one more minute and the ride doesn't even count for, to, for today, right? Isn't that how that works? I mean, we got her done, but barely did. Regardless of uh, whatever the future the impossible route holds. This is like the greatest achievement in my life, the greatest thing I've ever done, the thing I'm the most proud of uh, because of how much it's taught me just about life and how, how invincible you are if you are put in a position where you can't quit. When you allow people to do their best work, it motivates you to do your best work. I've said this many times on the Instagram stories like, you know, I have so much pressure to make these films good because everyone gives me the best ingredients. Jeremiah gives me the best route. You know, he gives me the best logistics. Alex gives me the best photos. Ben gives me the best video. I mean, it's just like, dude, I can't waste their work. December is about pushing my body and my mind and my spirit and my relationships to the absolute limit. 
and it sets my year up in a way that I'm, I'm able to go and do these things that are way beyond my capability. But I just know I can be better. And I think that with that little principle, that little seed, the impossible route also shows me like you can be better, you can do more. You just have to put yourself in a situation where you're pushed through that threshold of amazing. It's late, I gotta get home, the family's sleeping, I have not had dinner, but my macros are still actually on point. I've had 140 grams of protein so far today. Uh, I'm in a caloric deficit. I'll probably have a protein shake when I get home, but I don't have anyone around me. That's the one thing that I would say is I'm a little sad at this moment is like I don't have my family with me to say yet. Anyways, thank you for watching. Check out the Impossible Routes. We have seven of them for free. And as always, Vegan Cyclist. I've been yeah. giving you the worst.